This is the 90 Degree Show brought to you by the Marching Podcast and Blog Talk Radio. And here's your host, the Phantom Podcaster himself, Joe Beard. Good evening. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Welcome to the 90 Degree Show. I am your host, Joe Beard, and happy to be of service for you tonight. Today is December 8th, 2013, 5 o'clock on the West Coast and 8 o'clock on the East Coast. We appreciate all those listening live, listening in podcast form through Blog Talk Radio, our website, or through iTunes. At the end of the broadcast, if you decide you like the show, then we appreciate a donation to the network, if you feel so in your heart, of course. Just simply go to themarchingpodcast.com and click on the Donate button to help improve the show and help build our scholarship fund. Well, today is the last day of the 2013 broadcast for the 90 Degree Show, and it has been a very good year. We have made a lot of upgrades to the show this year, and we like the format that we have, and we appreciate all the experts that are calling in to be a part of our show, you and the listener, uh, who calls in and speaks, and all the feedback we've been, all the feedback that we've been getting. Uh, we appreciate all those things, and appreciate you, and appreciate our support, so we can build this appreciation. We also appreciate the response on the web through Twitter, Facebook, and the Fifth Quarter. The show is starting to gain a little respect with you, the people, and that is what we imagine for the show. We want to talk and give our account of what happened, but we want more and more people to call in and tell us what they think so that you know, we'll, we'll get a good synopsis. We'll hear uh, everything from all angles. So today will be the first day of the format that we somewhat imagined for the show. Um had a lot of feedback this week, so we're going to make sure we read all that on the air, and we want to give people um, that commented some shine and their shout-outs, because this is, like I say, the people show, and we'll get into the outline of the show later. So, tonight's show is brought to you by Liquid Effects Photography, Block Band Music, Bandhead.org, and HBCUNews.net. Uh, we will make sure we will read the winner from our last week's matchup, which is the Bayou Classic, and we'll read um, the voting for that in the next segment. So uh, we just read our sponsors, and our next segment is brought to you by Liquid Effects Photography and HBCUNews.net. So let's go ahead and start to hear from them now. This is... Joshua Cousin, representing the Ocean of Souls, and you're listening to the 90 Degree Show on the Marking Podcast Network. Do you know where to find scholarship information and other financial resources that are available to HBCU students? Are you up to date on the latest information in the HBCU world? If you answer no to any of these questions, then HBCU News with the Reads is the place for you. We provide information to spark interest, success stories of graduates, and the latest on issues that you care about. So check out HBCU News with the Reads, Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern on blogtalkradio.com forward slash marching podcast. Check out our website and point your browser toward hbcunews.net and join in on the calls and discussion today. Having an anniversary party, birthday party, or better yet, you're about to marry that special someone? Liquid Effects Photography is the perfect choice to immortalize all your most special moments. With 10 years of dependable professional service that can deliver from the conventional to the best in cutting-edge technology and creativity. Come experience the uniqueness of Liquid Effects Photography. We serve the entire upper Midwest and will travel further upon request. Come check us out at liquideffects.com. That's L-I-Q-U-I-D-E-F-F-E-X.com. Or call us at 773-454-5556. That's 773-454-5556. Hi, this is Thaddeus Dixon, crab of 94 on the sonic boom of the South, graduate of Jackson State University, class of 2000, and you are listening to the 90 Degrees Show at the Marching Podcast Network. Oh, 
Okay, we're back, and we want to uh, make sure that we show love to our sponsors. Um, that first segment, uh, of course, we, like you say, um, what is that? Liquid Effects Photography and HBCUNews.net. Um, we want to make sure that we read the winner from our week week 14 matchup um, uh, on the marchingpodcast.com. You're listening to Southern uh, playing the Purple Rain. You're actually hearing them singing right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's their thing. That's one of their things that they uh, play. So we want to go ahead and read um, the results uh, from that voting. Let me go ahead. That's... That's actually, you know, I'll turn it off right when they start to open up. But let me go ahead and read the results from our uh, last week's voting for the Marching Podcast People's Choice Awards. Again, this will be the last. Um, well, no, well, well, no, no. This will be the second to the last uh, voting we'll have. We'll have one more voting for the SWAC Championship. We'll have that for the week, and then we will post. On our blog, blog the number four dot the marching podcast dot com, the results from 2013. You, the people, have voted each and every week, so we want to um, applaud you, the people, for getting on the marching podcast dot com website and voting. We appreciate your support. We appreciate your time. So we'll be um, putting out that blog post. Uh, probably in a couple weeks after the voting is closed for the SWAC championship. But now um, let's go ahead and read uh, the voting, and let's go ahead and uh, we'll close the voting here. And let's go ahead and add a little suspense here. Last match up was the famous Bayou Classic between Southern University and Grambling University. And viewing the results here, it was it was close. It was closer than what people what, what I would thought was sixty percent of the vote. Southern University edges out Grambling. So we want to uh applaud Southern University for winning. Um uh, and a lot of Grambling folks spoke out, you know, they were happy with their show because, you know, they're full of that energy and happy with, you know, their band and what, you know, outside of our synopsis or whatever. Of course, of course, a lot more of the hardcore band heads from the outside looking in, you know, sided with Southern or whatever. But Grambling, like we said, it was not a pushover. It was not some type of blowout. Um, Grambling showed up this year. It was just a slight edge in the voting. So we want to commend all those who voted, and thank you. We'll have another voting this upcoming week for the uh, SWAC championship. This matchup that we'll be talking about tonight, Jackson State versus Southern University, the Boombox Classic Part 2. Um, we'll definitely be uh, interested to see what you all have to say tonight. We have some good feedback. And so we'll go ahead and get into tonight's show. So the outline for tonight's show will be the SWAC Battle of the Bands. This was a good idea, but there was a battle of the bands for all the SWAC schools after the football game. This was um, SU, SU Southern, Jackson State, Arkansas Pine Bluff, and Grambling did not attend. According to the beloved fifth quarter, and I want to make sure I, I open this up so we have the uh, fifth quarter here. Um, on edge, you guys make sure you go to the fifth quarter and form dot the fifth quarter dot com. That's the um, numerical five t h e number five t h quarter dot com form dot the fifth quarter dot com, and you go ahead and make sure you sign up for our account. Really good way to keep your ear to the street for all the hardcore band cats here. But um, uh, shout out to uh, the guy here. It's 13 C A W S. So 13 say uh, he said um, according about this uh, battle of the bands that it was a great idea and it uh, and it was sure to help with the ticket sales. Um, I wanna um, I wanna read his comment, but um, he said that every swag band was gonna be there the GSU. Now he seemed to have a little bit more information about it. Um, but he said that Pine Bluff wasn't coming and that the buses had scheduled um, – the buses they had scheduled to take from Dallas were canceled due to the weather. And after hearing the parade in Dallas had been canceled due to the weather, um, will GSU be in Houston? So I guess there was something with the weather going on down there. This, is, of course, was, again, according to 13CA 
WS. So shout out to you, man, for um, leaving some information here. Uh, someone from uh, representing Phi Beta Sigma and Kappa Kappa Psi uh, helping us out with some information on the show. I wasn't sure, was looking forward to hearing from everyone, but wasn't sure. But it was invited to all the SWAC schools to attend and definitely helped with the the tickets. Um, and uh, we'll uh, looks like we got our experts here calling in and uh, we'll be bringing them on. Um, and we're going to be talking about the Battle of the Bands in the next segment what they feel about their battle of the bands. We'll take another break, then we'll come back and talk about the zero quarter uh, and then halftime for the Boombox Classic Part 2. Um, and the last quarter, we'll give, uh, I'm sorry, in the last segment, we'll give our our experts the parting shots uh, to end the show. And we'll ask them a real quick, you know, it's our last segment with the quick hits. We want to give them really quick, boom, who you think is going to win the Honda? We got those eight bands. We will list them at the end, and we'll be like, hey, y'all, what do you think? Rapid fire, boom. So we'll get into that. Let's go ahead and get into the show. I think we got Troy and Rashad on the line. Let me see. Uh, Troy, is that you? Yes, sir. How you doing, Joe? What's going on, CB, man? How you doing, man? I'm good. All is well. That's what's up, man. And let me see. I think this is Rashad here. Rashad, is that you? That's the proof. What's going on, man? How you doing, man? Feeling good, man. I'm trying to finish up these shows. I heard that, man. I heard that. it was a lot of lot of information to look at, and then you know, like um, I didn't see too much yesterday. Um, I was at a viewing party yesterday. Shout out to the Jackson State Alumni Association of Los Angeles and the Southern University Alumni Chapter of uh, Los Angeles. I went down there for. Uh, the viewing party, and I came back, and I was tired, but I didn't see any clips, and I didn't see anything late that night, so I saw a lot of stuff early this morning, so really shaving it close to, you know, when we had our broadcast, but um, r- right quick, I wanted to say, you know, shout out to JSU and those Southern alumni out here in Los Angeles, um, shout out to you, I have to, you know, applaud, you know, being way out here on the West Coast, it's so different, man. It's just so different. It's just as far as so many things we could get into and not having that band representation or just so many folks around. It's great to be back around folks from HBCUs and and it was crunk. A lot uh a lot of good um a lot of good feedback, a lot of good representation there from schools and just it was crunk. It was a lot of people, it was more than I expected and I even heard that it was supposed to be more people there. So HBCUs are definitely out in your major cities, especially your major cities where a lot of black folks are. Um, but it was just good to see that because I stay way out here in Redlands, and for people that know that Southern California area is is, is way out there. So, um, you know, shout out to you, the football game, which also helped the viewing party as well, went into double overtime. And, you know, it was just really, really crunk. They played, you know, played the Frankly Beverly at halftime. So the old folks got out there and started uh, cutting the rug, as they say. Um, so so it was real cool. And shout out to anyone that's uh, out here listening tonight. You know, I told folks about the podcast we'll be on tonight. Or shout out to folks that may be listening tomorrow. You know, um, I just wanted to, you know, send a shout out to everybody out there and, uh, you know, let let you know that we had a really good time. So so getting back into the actual matchup itself, according to our uh, beloved fifth, uh, and shout out to this guy, BG, who posted halftime in the zero quarter on the thread, uh, but this guy, it was this Aaron 100, uh, Aaron 100 said that the attendance was at 38,985, but the pregame, uh, of course, was kind of empty. The stadium seemed to swallow up a lot of the sound from each band. Um, halftime, you know, he said he preferred all corn and Alabama State over the two featured bands. He said that both sounded good, but this battle yeah. was too overly hyped by the band fans. And uh, the game itself was OMG, of course, went in double overtime, but not an epic as the first meeting band-wise. But Houston is a good location, by the way. JSU fans travel well, too. So shout out to Aaron 100 for, for posting uh, the good feedback. 
Um, but I was surprised myself. I was like, wow, he felt that Alcorn and Bama State had a better show. So definitely I was crunk to get into the um, the battle here. I'll go by each school, <clears throat> I'll one, and then I'll give you guys the time of what you say about each one. Uh, Alabama State, I thought it was a typical Alabama State show. I was not pleased with the precision, and they weren't as clean in their formations like I used to see in. They still had a good sound on the field, good energy throughout the show. Um, the drill was good, but I'm not a fan of how they change formations. I've said that over and over again, but they still have a complete show. Nothing jumps out at me, but I did like seeing the big girls co- come on after the dance routine. I thought the, the dance routine was good, too, for Alabama State. Just a really good, typical show from ASU, other than some of the mistakes and like, the precision, you know. Uh, but nothing better than anything. I, I did see one formation that that uh, had a lot of holes in it. They did have a lot of show, and that seemed to be a, with a couple of the bands. There are a lot of holes in the show, but they had holes in that show too. But nothing much, nothing less. No mas, uh, mas o menos en español, por favor. Like that's what I'm thinking about Alabama State. Um, Troy, what do you think about Alabama State show, man? <clears throat> Alabama State's field show was a lot of mistakes. I've seen a lot of people screwing up pinwheels, uh, mm. step two. I mean, it, it was it was bad. <clears throat> At one point in the dance routine, it was somebody in like the third row. I think it was a female that was like just in the middle of nowhere. She was like in no man's land. And her <laughs> line was on the yard line. I'm like, how can you not be on the yard line? You know, it was so that was bad. <laughs> they sounded, you know, okay. You know, um, right. They didn't have good balance to me. The dance routine, like you said, was pretty good. The big girls was that was a nice little gimmick, you know, change the scene. But um, other than that, I was I was disappointed in their field show. Mhm. Uh, Rashad, man, what you think, man? What do you think about Alabama State? I'm telling you what I, th- I thought about Alabama State right now. No, that's the, uh, that's the only show I had seen. Of all the bands that you asked, you're going to ask me about the last one. Joe, if you're going to ask me about that one first, why don't you put them first on your website? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I That was random. Uh, uh, ran, <laughs> random, that was straight random. I, 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 uh, I did, I did um, I'm just not thinking about it. I did have them last on that little list. Uh, mm-hmm. I think just because it got, like, updated late. But, yeah, I, I just threw Alabama State on here. That's cool. I mean, we could come back to it. Um, I go to uh, Mississippi Valley State. Uh, I was impressed with Valley this year. Like, I was impressed at the FAM game. I think I think that was our first game, our second game. They played FAM well, and they had some really good fifth quarters this year. The main thing jumps out about this performance was the holes in the show. I mean, oh, it was no. a good show. And and they sounded good. And you like you like Valley. I was like, all right, watch out for Valley now. You know what I'm saying? But the 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 holes made their precision bad. <clears throat> I mean, like mm-hmm. it was holes all over their their band. Not like in one spot, but it was in yeah. so many that with the formations and the drills they had, it, it made some of them look like horrible. And and um, <clears throat> they sound good, and they got some power, but they lose a lot of it on the drill. That could have been with <clears> the <throat> holes. You know, I thought that Virginia – I thought about Virginia State and Central and, like, the little hybrid effect and, like, like maybe that could have played a part. Like, maybe Valley could have showed up doing something like that, and, and it could have been pretty good. They had a, they had a good dance routine, but not, like, uh, not a lot of energy behind it. And I think this performance, it came down to the coaching to some degree, like with the holes and the numbers that maybe they could have just done something different with, you know, who mm-hmm. showed up or, I mean, I mean, because they sounded good. And, you know, I was just, other than that, you know, it was just the holes was just too, too, too noticeable, man. Uh, Troy, what you think about uh, Mississippi Valley State, man? I'm I'm in agreement with you on the holes. I think that ruined their show. I've seen two squads that had one person in them. And I think it was like two or three squads with two people. It was terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, the sound, the sound was okay. It it wasn't anything to write home to me about. I think they could have really uh, took something out of Preview's book and and revamped their show the way that they did 
to account for those numbers where they were mm. more spaced out and, you know, because it looked bad. You know, you had like five yards in between some squads almost, and so the line was just terrible, you know. Yeah. It, it, it was bad. I, I couldn't get past that. Yeah, man. That, so, that, I, I mean, I totally agree. And it was just all over the place. And then, like, they had their drills. Um, you know, I mean, it looked the drill looked okay, but then, like, the fact that the whole it made, I think it was like the, like the the less than you know less than sign you know, and I just I was just like wow. It, it was just like you said. It was just hard for me to get over. Uh, Rashad, what you think, man? Did you check out Valley? Oh, that was the first one that I saw there. Oh, man. Um, they really need a lot of work, perfectly honest, man. I, I don't want to dog the program at all. I know they're trying to get it back together. But, Joe, there's a, just a lot of things just from a just being a band, day one perspective, that they need to fix before they even get on the show. Um, for example, drum majors doing different formations. When the drum majors first come on the field, if you look at the top of the field and you look at the bottom of the field, the drum majors are doing different things. And I'm mm-hmm. sure a prayer mm-hmm. person will look at that and say, I meant to do that, which is the phrase of the day. I meant to do that. <laughs> yeah, right. he meant to do that. Right. Yeah, I meant to do that. You know, but um, also just, okay, the percussion does not match the rest of the band at all, at all. Like, the rest of the band, are there colors like green and white? Yeah. Uh, I believe, and then a little bit of gold up in there too, I think. Okay, and the percussion section is wearing red shirts and, and khakis? Like they work at Target? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? I mean, there's just, I know these are petty things, but they're not petty. Because before, it's exactly you, even, not petty. before you even play a note, there's certain things that you just got to get right as a band. Even the drum majors uniforms, like you look at like the dark uniforms they have, those are band, they look like band uniforms. You know? Yeah, they're you ugly too. Like drum major uniforms. Um, yes, they did have a lot of uh, problems in the holes. Also with the arranging, I heard a lot of things in the arranging. They've got a you know re- a pretty powerful baritone section with respect to their band, but they don't do a good job of using the baritone section throughout. It's like, okay, we're going to sound really thin, really thin, baritone, really thin, baritone again. I mean, come on. <laughs> Use these baritones throughout instead of having a one, uh, an unbalanced band. So. And they didn't have a dancer team at the end. I don't, don't know what was up with that. So I really, I really did not feel the show at all. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, you know, I, I still, I still like the way they sound. You know, just because you know Valley sounded way, they used to sound way worse than that. You know, I mean, back yeah. in the day, it used to be bad than that. But I mean, they're. Uh, uh, Joe, let me ask you a real quick question. Yeah. What was up with the color guard running across the field? <laughs> That's right, that- they came out and then they ran across the field with the American flag. I thought that, uh, well, I thought it was a part of their show, or like maybe it was their flags, because, cause, you know, we talked about them this year. They they are throwing that uh, like core military red beret type of mixture up in there. So I was figuring that was like part of what they were doing. You know what I'm saying? I thought that, um, you know that that's like. That was like a military part. Like they were giving some shout out to some folks on that type of thing. I'm not really sure, but <laughs> no. But again, but it was like it was the holes. Cause you know, with me, you know, I'm gonna definitely be tripping about how you sound. And and they passed that test. But you know, just those formations. Uh, we got another call, and can I, I think this might be Maurice? Let me just see. Uh, Maurice, is that you? Yes. What's up, man? What's going on, man? Maurice, are you on, on your way back home from uh, a good ballad of bands. We were actually just talking about Mississippi Valley State. And uh, what did you think about uh, Mississippi Valley? Did you get a chance to see their um, ballad of bands? Yeah, I got a chance to see them. I, I think they had a pretty pretty good sound. They were smaller than they were at the beginning of the year. I mm-hmm. just think that because they had some, some situations going on, finances that were I guess giving out to certain members that shouldn't have been, but that's a whole other story. As far as their sound is concerned, they they had a pretty good sound, so I was kind of impressed by that. Yeah, we we were just talking about that too. We were just talking about like how the holes, uh, you know, were just noticeable. We were also talking about, and I know we were talking about this last time earlier on in the year, the the percussion 
and the different colors they were wearing. They were wearing some type of red shirts. Is that part of what they were doing as part of the percussion, or is that traditional valley? Do you know anything about that? No, that's not traditional valley. That's that's new valley. <laughs> oh, they, they, okay. <laughs> they basically used to have, like, concert jobs and stuff on the sideline, um, like the xylophones and stuff like that. that they used to be more corpse style than anything. Did they have bongos? Yes, sometimes they did, but they never marched with them. They never mm-hmm. marched down the street with bongos. Um, I actually was sitting up in the top five valley, um, and I, I was a little bit out of it. It was so cold in that stadium. I was a little bit out of it. I ended up getting sick on the trip, and I ended up falling asleep. And somebody <laughs> from Valley that I was sitting about took a picture of me. So the picture is out there on Facebook. So y'all see me sleep. That's me. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> That's, I'm sure somebody has seen it. But um, Valley did have holes on the field, but their holes were explainable by it looking like they, they had some people that couldn't come, like some people that were probably had tests or something and they couldn't make the trip. Wow, Those holes yeah. they had were explainable because you can see there were literally people that were missing out of squads. But Alabama State, on the other hand, that was just no excuse. I mean, <laughs> their field shows have always just been – they've always been tainted by the fact that no band director, nobody there on the staff seems to understand what squad motion is, nor do they understand how to put people in squad to set them up. So I've done in that now where it's showing there's three guys, there's three people in between the yard line, and then there's five people in between the yard line right next to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a simple issue that even if the band director's been corrected, any, any band student – that has any type of sense could have fixed right. it in band right. practice, you know. So it's just, you know, they missed the Alabama State had probably one of the best sounds in the whole battle, in my opinion. But, you know, their field motion is what hurts them. They, It's like nobody can ever get down there and say, hey, man, look, it needs to be four people between every yard line at all costs. They didn't have a problem where they didn't have numbers because they were, I believe, they were the biggest band there in the battle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they look complete. So, I mean, yeah, they look complete. And that was one thing I know I, I noticed. In their show, I, I noticed that they weren't as clean and like their steel formations. Usually, like the very formation, like whatever like an arrow or whatever it is that start out with, that was crooked. And I thought I was like, well, you know, that's usually better than that. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad you said that about Alabama State because um, we actually started talking about them. But that's a that's a really good point. You know, the essence of you know what we want to get into next. Let's go to Alcorn. Um, I thought I think they're a good band, and they can steal your show because you know they're built in a great image of Jackson State. So you know they can always make things interesting. I think their drill was similar to something like the what we saw at the Jackson State game, um, but it didn't look they didn't look as good on the field as they did in the Alcorn game. Their precision was a little off. And I was wondering maybe it was the field, maybe it had something to do with what was going on, but. I, th- I thought they sounded okay. Didn't notice too much of the slurring that, you know, um, they looked to have a good show other than the drill. They took some of the excitement up with the dance feature because, you know, one side played and then the other side did the Michael Jackson. So then I was like, okay, like, you know, this might be something interesting. And then the second side literally took me out of the show, you know, you know, they did, Rashad and I, we've talked about this, but the running around, go crazy. And Maurice, you and Troy and I, we've all, I think that was 98 or 97, whenever we did that, that run around, go crazy. please stop it. It, it ain't working, you know, uh, so people can try to kill that. One person never actually recovered, and I noticed that, but, like, they ran around crazy, and then the person literally was, I think they were either off the line but they were right yeah. next to the person next to them. And it was like, duh, mm-hmm. just just like you said, you notice that mm-hmm. as any band person, you're like, get back, get back your spacing. But they never recovered, and it stuck out because everyone else in line but that person. Um, right. So <clears throat> that hurt. The ending dance moves were kind of whack. I mean, I was just like, what was that at the end? And overall, I just thought the show was just okay, but – the precision was off and the whackness of the dance routine at the end. Um, it, only thing I can't say, shout out to the tubas. Alcorn always seemed to keep some tubas, but they were woofing out there. Um, so that was definitely something that I noticed. Uh, Rashad, did you check out Alcorn, man? Yeah, man. Um, Alcorn was surprisingly good uh, to me. Um, 
you know, after seeing them, you know, I saw them last year at the Honda. This earlier this year at the Honda, I wasn't really impressed. I saw them, I think it was at the Jackson State game earlier this year. Um, I really wasn't impressed. And I think they did the same drill. But I, I yeah. was impressed. I, per, I, I would I would I respectfully disagree. Hopefully you won't press the mute button muted button on me. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I just be talking like oh it seems like we lost Rashad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I, I, I um I thought they were better this time. I thought the drum major entrance was more they came out there and they sold it. Like they didn't okay. have to do it. Like they believed in what they were doing. And they, you know, I thought it was good. I thought their marching was, was relatively uniform. I thought their marching set step size was relatively good. The problems that they had when they made those four uh, dive triangles, I mean, four uh, squares, like we hated on that at the last show, and it was much better. And even what the drum majors were doing in the middle as mm-hmm. they were doing that, I thought was much better. So I would definitely give props to them. Um, the, strong, the show sounded pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Diamonds, not, the diamonds weren't too bad, I think, is what I wrote down. The thing that most was terrible on them, <laughs> I think there was one time at the end where, like, there was one person that was, like, on the 42-yard line for, like, the whole dog, the whole dog going dance routine. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's the problem? Can you not see that? You know? And then they had so <laughs> right. many times to fix it, it just didn't. And then that last note, it was like it was all good until they got to the last note. Like, what the heck was that? They should have just left that at home. I've got, I haven't seen Alcorn State yet, but of the three bands, of the bands that I've seen, not including the halftime show, I've got them as number three. Um, and that's not really fair to Texas Southern because I really, I've been watching them as I've been watching, this, as I've been talking here. But uh, I've got them at number three right behind Alabama, right behind the top two bands. Okay. Okay. Uh, Maurice, what did you think about uh, Alcorn? Um, I, I agree with Rashad. I think they did, in my opinion, a, a, a pretty good job. Um, it was a little better than the one they did in Jackson. Uh, but but I, I think that with, with the, my problem and probably every other Jacksonian's problem with Alcorn is that when you marched in the Sonic Boom, you see and you hear and you look at all the similarities and it kind of turns you off. Mm-hmm. So it's harder for a former Bozeman not to be biased. Even if it's against another school, and not Jackson State. Um, but you know, in realizing the history of Alcorn, Alcorn's band director Samuel Griffin, of, well, he was the band director for what, what, almost forty years. He is a Jacksonian, so he, he marched with my dad. Part, yeah, he was in the band he was with a my part dad. Of the reason, right? He yeah. was a part of the reason why that band ended up having so so much, so many similarities that you know looked and sounded like Jackson State. Their morale was down because, like I told you, the bands were sitting in the nosebleed, and that's why I was sitting. They were sitting to the left of me up at the top, and when Jackson State did their show, they heard a song that Jackson State did on, on the field, and they began to boo, but you couldn't hear them. Now, let, let, let me get to, to the media situation, because I don't think any of these forums ever get into talking about this. And there probably are other schools that, that do this. Like, I know Sam has done it before, and what I'm talking about is, is making a song signature. And what I mean by making a song signature is choosing a song that nobody else would ever have even played had that band not made it popular. Now, we know Jack State is, is normal for doing this. Songs like Nobody Does It Better. That song never would have been popularized the way it was in the band arena had not Jack State started playing that song. But it wasn't even one of the more popular mint condition songs. A song like Swoop, which, which was a good band band song, but a song that Jack State basically made a popular song in the band arena. And you can name more songs that Jack State just basically made them popular in the band arena. Well, this next song called Bad Girls, which one of my good colleagues named William Brown arranged for Jack State Band back in 2008. Nobody was even thinking about playing this song. And so Mr. Murray at the time, he was Mr., was a part of the Jack State Band program then. When he went over to Alcorn, he took the Bad Girls concept or, or had somebody to transcribe another arrangement because it's not Will's arrangement. And they've been playing Bear Girls all year. So they were kind of, coming back to what I'm talking about, the SWAC Championship, they were kind of upset because they heard Jack and State play Bad Girls from the Jay Sets, which that was an, a Jay Set song way back in 2008. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they were kind of salty about it. They felt 
they, I heard them blow, and you could hear them up there talking, they were cussing and stuff. So their morale, I'm not sure, but their morale might have been a little bit down because of that, because they knew they were going to have to come back and play a song that Jack State already previously played in front of the entire crowd at halftime. So wow. I, I think that the, that little bit right there may have kind of hit the, hit the morale situation for them. But I do agree with Rashad. The drum majors did do a better job this time on the field, in my opinion, uh, than they did back in Jackson. So it was just the typical Alcorn show. They came out there and did the typical Super Soul. You know, they, they did the, the, the It's Real song that they, that they made popular because everybody has their own signature song, you know, but they just did what Alcorn does. And I think Dr. Murray is, is, is um, doing a real good job with putting the band out there with a better sound. They, they got one of the best sounds. If I went through all the Alcorn bands I've had in the last 13 years or that I've heard in the last 13 years, that's probably one of the best Alcorn sounds to date. Yeah, they definitely sound good. I definitely agree with that, with <laughs> definitely that sound. Troy, what do you think about All Corn? Um, I pretty much agree with Rashad and Maurice. Um, I think the best part about All Corn was their drum majors. I actually kind of enjoyed them. You know, during the field show, they kept me entertained, especially being that, you know, I pretty much seen that drill before this season. Um, I thought it was pretty clean. They sounded good. I didn't hear too much, uh, you know, bad stuff coming from them in terms of sound. So, you know, I was, I actually was kind of impressed with them. You know, that's hard to say, but I was kind of impressed with him. <laughs> right, right, right. And definitely he brings in a good point. You know, Maurice talks about, you know, the bizarre, bizarro effect. You know what I mean? Like the fact uh, how close they are to Jackson State. And we've talked about that before in the past. So, um, but still, you know, they still had a good show. Um, <clears throat> so we had to give them props. Uh, next, moving on to uh, Prairie View A&M. And um, let's see here. I got... Uh, I think that they have a really good band. I think they have a great band, actually, full of energy. I think they march hard, and they have heart. They remind me of a small CIAA band, like a Smith from the late 90s, where they don't have that many players or that many instruments or tools, but these guys have the players and the tools that the small bands don't have. And only thing, you know, I'll just say that. Okay, now... I look here down at the clock, and okay, that's it. Yes, Prairie View, their halftime show just ended just now, so now we can all sit back and talk about it. And, um, you know, that was supposed to be a joke because, you know, it was very, very long. Yes, we, yes, I, I, I thought it was funny. But their show was a little bit, little bit too long. I mean, uh, well, no, it was too long. Let, let me say I'm trying to clean up a little bit, but I commend the bands that are the showmen and that they're able to put on a feature show more than a halftime show. I think A&T is the, is the best at it right now, and I think that you know Virginia State does a good job of you know like trying to put on a show. But I like that uh, Prairie View is on the same page as this, but I think pick one feature and stick with it because I feel that the show is full of showmanship, but it was still whack. Like it was too, it was too much stuff going on. I didn't care for like their block formations. Like it they looked like they were spread out. Like when they were still playing the block formation, I didn't care. <laughs> they feature the drums cause you know, prayer views known for their drum section and that's Okay. But then they featured Janet Jackson. Oh, and Janet Jackson came out there. Yeah, and then they took one of the Z players out to, you know, to to do something with him and then like just the the spacing from when she grabbed him to where the chair was, I was like, "Oh, that's going to take like 5 minutes." Like that's that's yeah. going to take a long time, you know. So that was a little off and then like she did whatever, and I guess she flipped over his head or something. It was quick. Yeah. I was like, okay. And he was like, oh, well, it was oh. And then they brought Michael back to life. I mean, I that mean, was crazy. Yeah. Shout out to I like uh, uh, Jamel Hill. I listen to her. I watch her on ESPN, and she's always talking about uh, team doing too much or hashtag DTM doing too much. This was like what I felt about Prairie View show. Just hashtag doing too much. You know. <laughs> But they got to get your you got to get your school formations the letter formations right. 
you know, JSU or the SU or whatever, the the P, the prayer view ain't it was crooked. The V was crooked. I was like, oh man, like okay, that's strike one, you know. Then the drum major dropped the mace. And then the announcer was like, oh, we meant we meant to do that. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh. And a lot of people started to boo him, you know, and, mm-hmm. and that, that hurt. And then that gets to number three. Sometimes your announcer can kill your show. And I just, yes. And and all the jokes. And I appreciate everyone calling on the show tonight for the analysis of all the bands. Yes. You know, I was like, why is he? Yes. So I, I was like, wow, the brother is literally losing me with all the time he's sissing like that. And then, like, you know, like my man Wyclef told Dylon, you can either make the show or you could ruin the show. You know what I'm saying? And I just felt like he, he just he ruined it for me with all the talking he was doing. You know, just hashtag DTM. And, you know, it ain't really nothing more about that. Uh, Troy, I'll go to you next since we talked out, talked about Jamel and being from the Detroit area. What do you think about Prairie View Show? Detroit Sound, Mumford High School. Um, <laughs> I, Prairie View, Prairie View I, I agree with you. It was kind of creepy bringing Michael Jackson back to life. I didn't like that. <laughs> um, I didn't like the whole Janet Jackson stick thing that they did. Now, as far as their spacing went, I was not that – offended by it, and I'm going to tell you why. They had a pretty balanced sound. I think being that they are a smaller band and maybe, you know, the way that they were spaced out, it, it balanced them out, and I think they sounded good. The okay. drum yeah, that, was, that was that was terrible, but what, what I did like about it was their sound. I could appreciate it. I didn't, the, the America that they made on the field, that was terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, the drum feature, I'm not... A, I'm not big on that kind of stuff. I, I could take it or leave it. And the the thing is, you know, and they played two Jack two old Jackson State tunes, the Pleasure Principle and uh Let's Groove. Yeah. Now the thing with Prayer View is I don't like their arrangements, but they play them well. I didn't like their arrangements, but they played the arrangements that they had very well in my opinion. And they sounded good, so Visually, I'm going to give them about a D, but, you know, <laughs> sound-wise, I'd give them a, about a B plus. I think they sounded pretty good for what they had out there. Yeah, we definitely agree. We're on the same page. They definitely sound. I mean, I thought that overall, you know, everybody, you know, sounded pretty good. It's a good representation. Uh, uh, Rashad, what you think about Prayer View, man? Um, I just got to tell you one thing, man. For Prayer View, all you need to know just look at the fire. Look at the fire? Look at the fire. Did y'all see that part of the show? That was hilarious to me. We're like right in the middle of the dancer team. They came out there and they set two drums on fire. Did you see that? Oh, no. no. I did. Oh, my they God, did. They no. Set two, right in the middle of the drum show, they came out, they set two drums on fire. The drum show was ending and the announcer said, look at the fire. I heard him say it, but I didn't know what he was talking about. I didn't know what he was talking about, man. And the fire didn't do anything. Like, I thought somebody was going to put it. Like, I was watching it, and I saw come, some people running off the field with two drums on fire. Like, oh, what the heck? What did I miss? I, took it. I just saw them run out there, and they put two drums out there and set them on fire, and then nothing. And then they meant to do like, that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> man, her review show was the most inconsistent show of, of the day. And, and all my personal listeners, I don't mean that to diss you. I'm not saying that you have the worst show of the day. What I mean was that there was times when I was listening to them, I was like, wow, they sounded really great. Like I listened to them right after Alcorn. And I was like, gosh, like, man, they sound amazing. And then something else would happen. And I'd be like looking at the fire. Like, what the heck? <laughs> and then they sound really great. You know, so let's take it from the top here. First of all, you know, I meant to do that. That was hilarious. I, I actually thought it. I appreciated the, the announcer for trying to play that off. Right, but right. It was terrible. And the, and then I think I think the drum major laid like all the way on the ground. Like he didn't do like a neck bend. He just laid on the ground and put his head on the ground. <laughs> well, he had one. He had he had one leg to the side like a hurdler stretch. But he, he it, okay. so it wasn't all the way. Yeah, but it was a little something. 
And then, you wow. know, when it came out there and they made the, the PV, you just like you said, the U, I mean, the V was really, really bad. And then the U, the spacing was all over the place. If you look at the left side of the U, it's like a ton, it's like 40 people in that line. If you look on the right side of the U, it's like 16 people in the line. Like, what's going on? Um, how they got from place to place, going from the PVU to the next formation, was really was really bad. People were arriving all at, at different times instead of letting the whole formation come together at one time. But then when they started playing, it's like, wow, and listen to that. That sounds great. And I really thought that they were taking a chance by spreading out across the field like that, you know. Mm-hmm. But, it, but I think it worked out for them. They weren't as big as some of the bigger bands but it gave them the opportunity to kind of look like they were. Because people can judge your band basically on how big they think you are. You know, so I applaud them on that. Um, I thought the drum feature was really, really cool, um, except for one thing where he's like, look at the snare. And the snare just stood on chairs and played. Right, like, yeah, right. Okay. But the whole thing about, you know, the multi times playing upside down, we've seen it, but it was still cool. Um, just the whole drumline feature in, in general I thought was really cool. Now, but the main thing I didn't understand, their show concept, what the heck? Why do a Janet Jackson show and a Michael Jackson dance routine? I, I, don't, I mean, don't just DTM, d- just, doing it, just doing it all, just trying to do everything in next week. That's we what I was thinking, man. Right. We meant to do that. <laughs> we meant to do that. <laughs> we meant to do that. I just didn't get it. And then, but wait a second, right in the middle of the Michael Jackson dancer team, they went back to Janet Jackson. Like, whose idea was this? (laughs) You know, I really wasn't feeling it. Now, the whole scream thing and bringing Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson out in their dance, I thought it was really cool, but it it wasn't executed very well. The whole thing, we're bringing Michael Jackson back, we're resurrecting them, and it takes like 30 seconds you know, for him to come across the field and making a big deal about that, really distracted from the show. Instead, they could have just said, ladies and gentlemen, we're bringing back Michael Jackson to Janet Jackson, check him out, bam, and let him dance. And that would have been enough. And they would, I think they would have gotten house because the dancers were good. The song sounded good. But yeah. how they did it, that was just, all throughout their show, there was a lot of problems with general, general effect was, number, was their number one thing. They weren't consistent, and the show concepts, just didn't make sense a lot, but great sound. Maurice, what did you think, man? Uh, about uh, well, well, Prayer View. I'm gonna keep it short and simple. It's clear that Prayer View tried to stay as close to their roots of what they do on the field, as far as the drum feature and all that kind of stuff. But let's just be real. Whoever conceptualized this show and the announcer killed this show for them. Period. Yep. Point blank. Yep. Um, what they were doing is obviously somebody was watching a lot of bands back in the 90s because Jackson State did that entire screen concept to the T mm-hmm. with the Janet yep. and with a Michael Jackson. Plenty mm-hmm. comfortable. I, I, I never really cared for the Black Foxes as a dance line, but hey, it was what it was. Plenty principal uh, as an arrangement for them was complete and utter trash. I think that they could have um, what they probably should have done was uh, everybody always mentioned the PVU being they out of line, but that's not the first, and I'm sure it's not the last time. My problem was is that nobody who was a conceptualizing uh, group in that band even thought about the fact that this was blatant disrespect. Like mm-hmm. Rashad just said, you can bring out Michael Jackson in order to, to bring up the legacy of Michael Jackson, but don't bring out Michael Jackson wrapped in a gold sheet being brought out there like you got some type of a coffin made deal and now he's going to come back alive? That was completely stupid. It was scary. It was freaky. And whoever brought that concept is a complete idiot. And anybody who agrees (laughs) with that concept is an idiot also. That's (laughs) crazy. That That is disrespectful to anybody who is even a cousin or a distant relative to Jackson's. You don't do that kind of stuff. You don't bring that type of of death into the atmosphere like that. You know what I'm saying? that, that, That was just crazy, man. But do I think they had good dancers? I do. But the house was not there because people were so thinking about these people really, really did come out here talking about we're going to resurrect Michael Jackson. Yep. Then the announcer, I I really, really do believe the announcer was drunk. How could you get up there and that man drop that mace like that and go say, we meant to do that? 
what, what kind yeah. of dumb statement is that to make over a mic? If I was a prayer of you alone, I would have been so pissed. That was a bad representation there all together. And, and, and had they stayed, like you said, they shouldn't have been trying to do the most. They should have been just trying to do prayer of you. Had they stayed on the lines of doing what prayer of you did, which they did a lot of stuff with what prayer of you did, but that extra stuff, but it's obvious that, that the gimmick area is not them. They don't need to go back that way. Especially right. if they're going to have people doing concepts like bringing somebody from the dead and then when you mess up, you have to holler about Y'all know we're meant to do that, right? Crazy. Yeah, man, because it just, it just hurt the credibility, too, to the show. You know what I mean? He tried something, but, again, he was doing too much. Just like the people, I don't know, they were panicking, and they put this show together Wednesday or something. I don't know, but hey, it wasn't a good, the greatest showing for them. But, again, they still sounded good. I mean, you know, a good representation. Uh, we got to move it along here because I'm seeing the, the time is just getting away from me. We still got another commercial, and we got to get into our feature matchup. Uh, but next is Alabama A and I I I I like I'm starting to like my find myself liking them. I like how they sound. The only issue I had with them this year and the, the battles we brought up with them is their energy and just the, the overall fight in them. But I felt that they stepped their game up for this performance. I noticed that they had holes in their show too and it hurt them on their drill. But they they did a good job of holding it together. I thought the difference was there was an entire section missing. Look like like they got into the uh, like the dance formation for the dancers or whatever, and it just looked like like someone had took like a bite out of like the right side or the left side, you know, on their side. So you know maybe it was easier for them to recover with like the same people being out. Where like Valley, there were holes all over their show. So, and just like, you know, Maurice, I'm glad you were able to give us the insight about something, you know, something else that went on and had those people, but still noticeable, but I still thought that they recovered well. And shout out to the tubas who was wolfing on the dance routine, and I thought that made the difference in a lot of their show to me. You know, they they got me hyped there at the end, and I enjoyed the show, but their new sound and whatever they're doing differently now with the coaching and the directors, you have to give them a thumbs up. But they performed well. Um, Maurice, yeah. what do you think about Alabama A&M? Um, I, didn't, I, don't, I didn't have too much to say about Alabama A&M. I can say that they are sounding better than they have in previous years. Um, I've never really been an a Alabama A&M fan as far as their program is concerned. Um, I just felt like they were just – one of the filler bands that was there, and I, I hate to say it like that, but I, I, I've just never cared for them. I, I remember years ago when, when Alabama, did it, Alabama did this show where they put all the drums on one side of 50, and they put all the wind players on the other side of 50. And I just, ever since, I, I just couldn't understand how somebody with a, a music degree that marched in a band program could ever, as a band director, put a band out there on the field like that. So I've, I, I've, I've always uh, been kind of not so much against A and M, but I've just never been an Alabama A and M fan. So you know, needs to say I, I didn't really listen to them as much. Troy, what you think about Alabama A and M, man? <clears throat> um, I'm a. I don't feel the way Maurice feels. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Alabama A and M, they had holes in their band, but I actually liked liked Alabama A and M. I I. Always been a, not a fan, but I've always respected Alabama A and M for what they do. You know, their tuba sounded good. I think Alabama A and M had a very balanced sound. Like you could clearly define their upper brass from their lower brass, and mm-hmm. they were balanced and clean. And I can always appreciate that in their sound. The drill, it was you know, it was pretty good. You know, but once again, those holes killed them. They had. I'm looking at their drill right now again. And I'm looking at a squad with one person in it. It's just terrible, you know. So, um, but I actually enjoy Alabama A&M. Uh, Rashad, what you think, man? Uh, Alabama A&M, I pretty much agree with everybody saying. Um, I think they sounded really good, um, and that's of course their number one thing here. Uh, so I watched. So as I was watching them, I was like, okay, Alabama. Uh, I would already put Prairie View in Mississippi. Well, Mississippi is out of state at the bottom, and Prairie View right above them. So as I was watching, I was like, okay, who's better, Alcorn or Alabama A&M? And it's a, it's a real tight battle. I would give it to Alabama A&M over Alcorn because I thought overall they were the better band. I don't think they had – I think they did it, actually. I think their dancer team was pretty good, actually. Um, mm-hmm. so we, we, I, okay, here's the thing. 
the first half of the show, the drilling and all that, was definitely not better than Alcorn. Alcorn definitely marks the hole in the in the, no doubt about that. But the overall, from the overall show standpoint, from the fact of how good Alabama A and M sounded, and having a really good dancer team, and having inc- exceptionally strong tuba section, um, that really worked for them, and it put them over the top. Now, Alabama A and M's thing right now, other than just you know having a little bit more energy and just kind of doing some more creative things, you got the sound now. Make it interesting. Is their percussion section? I don't know if you guys noticed, but the percussion section does not match their wins. There's a lot of time mm-hmm. in between transitions between songs. Like, wow, that sounded really good, and then it sounded like a bunch of people dropped some cans on the ground, and then it sounded good again. <laughs> like, wow, right. you got to get this percussion section to be locked in to the sound concept that the band is trying to uh, get across to the band, just like the winds are. That's how, I mean, that's, that's a really good point. It kind of talks about, really goes to when uh, Maurice talks about they had one where the, uh, the the drums were on one side and the winds were on the other. So there's definitely that, uh, I don't know, that bias towards the percussion there around in that program. Um, but it seems like we all agree that um, that they that they sound good. And that's the thing, and and um, it doesn't look like we're as none of us are as critical of their show. So I guess that's good. Nothing jumped out as bad, other than the holes in their show. So it looks like Alabama and M like looks like they showed up pretty well. This last um, part, uh, I'm sorry, this last band will be our last band, and then I want you guys to say um, we'll have to do a quick hits per se um, as far as who you think won the actual battle of the band so we can get into our feature. But Texas Southern is our last band. I think that they got great power, um, full-sounding band, great energy, great start with the tribute to Nelson Mandela and the South African National Anthem. That already like put them out there. So they were like, hey, we know what's going on. We're paying attention to what's going on. So it was a great start to their show. I didn't care for their opening formation, but then they rebounded in the drill, and I thought that they looked good for the rest of the drill. Um, they were marching hard, and the sound was there. They seemed to pick up uh, momentum throughout the show, so I was like, man, they 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 doing well. I didn't care for that Bruno Mars song. You know, like, that's another Everybody Named Mama playing song this year, but I didn't care for their arrangement or something. Something about it was a little off for me, and... um and maybe it was the chords, I'm not really sure. And then and then it happened. And I'll go ahead and cue my people because I can't stand it. And I won't have it. I, I just I gotta put y'all out there and I know what y'all know what I'm talking about because y'all saw the show, but then they brought someone out there to sing. And I was just like, you know what? They were I thought they were going well, I thought they were gonna win this thing. But then they that it put them at the bottom of the list. The only band to do it there, and I was hoping that no one did, but the dude got out there and, and he sounded like he was flat. Like he sounded like he was he wasn't on the same key with the band. And uh I was disappointed with that. Then they said it was giving a shout out to one of the student the student arrangers who actually um who actually did that, um, who actually wrote that and you know, I guess it sounded okay, but just the presentation with bringing the dude out there, it it took him out of the top for me. Um, but other than that, it was a good show. They did a, I, I like they did the chopped and screwed part with the X's. I'm not really sure what the if they were supposed to be eyes and the person was supposed to be dead or something. I'm, I'm not sure what that was, but I did like the 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 screwed how they played the song and then they chopped and screwed it. I did like that, and um, I thought they had a good show other than the announcers. Uh, Maurice, I'll let you go, man. What did you think? And it's definitely you got a lot of car background noise. Um, but I'll let you give your analysis, um, and then I have to turn some of the background down. But what did you think, man, of Texas Southern? Maurice, you still there? Yeah, I was wondering if we, we if we were losing him or not. Um, he's still in the car. Yeah, he may have uh, went through an area or something. Rashad, what did you think of uh, Texas Southern? Oh, great. You can call me while I'm watching this show right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, tr- uh, oh, okay, man. But uh, like I said, I saw it as we were starting. So I'm sitting there. You're talking, and I'm watching their show. So I try to – I'm watching it again to really get the full impact. Um, the show's pretty good. Um, their 
drilling is, is pretty good. It's not perfect. You can definitely see there's a lot of things. They just need to tighten it up. Like when they first do that slow marching coming on the field, the marching style Terrible. is across the field. Yeah, it's not. It's just what's going on here. But overall, their marching is not bad. They just need – they're not – if you were comparing it to a regular band, they would say, well, you would say, like, wow, that's pretty good. But then if you just got finished watching Jackson State and Southern do it, you're like, wow, look at that person, look at that person, look at that person, you know? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're going to have to tighten it up a lot before they can really get to that upper echelon of bands in their conference. Um, their sound is not bad. Their fan, opening fanfare, I didn't like it all. The, breathe, the, the, the phrasing was, you know, really bad as far as breathing after every single note. But overall, I didn't think they were too poor. Um I really couldn't appreciate the uh, the whole singing thing simply because I had it turned way down, so I couldn't even tell that the band was playing underneath um, the singer singing it. But based on what I saw, I would say, I definitely would say Alabama State, number one. I, I have seen them now, and they, they took that, in my opinion. Second place is really going to be close between Texas Southern and Alabama A&M. I need to watch Alabama a and M show again. I think it's going to be Texas Southern because I think that they did a much better job of representing themselves when it came to drilling. Um, the girls at the beginning, man, they're kicking those legs up. I got to give them some props to that. Um, and um, oh, and Texas Southern did the wave, didn't they? When they, everybody got on the ground and did that. I think that was, they did something. That's what's like with the two X's. Yeah. And yeah, I, I like I like I wasn't really sure what it was, but yeah, I, they did it during the chopped and screwed thing. So I, I thought that was a good effect. That was cool. I like that, and I, I like the fact that their man Alabama thing came off the field to this Christmas, which I think is appropriate. You know, it's Christmas time. You know, so mm-hmm. uh, based on that, now that I remember that, I definitely will give uh, Texas Southern the second place on the Battle of Bands. Okay, Troy, what do you but think about Texas Southern? Good Alabama and you know. <laughs> <clears throat> Texas Southern, the first thing you, I'm, I'm big on first note, last note, and the first time you see us and when you walk off the field. And when they first come on the field, that slow march was terrible. You know, if you looked at 16 people on a line, it was 14 different styles. And the lines were waving. I, I, I didn't like that at all. Uh, the beginning when they did like the little chevron to start the drill, the spacing was off. After that, they seemed to get it together. The sound was, it was decent. They sounded decent. Um, the pinwheel part of the drill, when they did the little, the X's and did the pinwheel, was pretty clean. I've seen a couple of, you know, mistakes or spacing issues, but nothing just egregious. So <clears throat> I'll probably give Texas Southern, like, maybe second place out of uh, all the bands that were there myself. Okay. So you give them second. Who do you think you give first to? I I don't maybe Alcorn. Okay, okay, yeah. It was it was tough because I, I I will say that I was pleased with the overall performance with the the uh, the conference. You know, just to see is this going to have a battle of the bands for the SWAT conference? So I want to applaud the great SWAT conference. Uh, I felt that it was a good representation where, like, you know, if you want to, people can see a, a, a tape of all the bands in your conference. I thought it was a good representation. Um, I think we got Maurice back on the line here. I'll bring him in. Maurice, is that you? Yes, yeah, me. Okay, man. Uh, what Real quick, man, what do you think about Texas Southern? Um, real quick, I thought the Texas Southern running the guy that was sitting on the field. That basically canceled any anything in my mind for ever putting them in a in a realm of, hey, this is a good band. They shouldn't have done that. Let the, that that's that eighty stuff. Let it stay where it is. That's all I can please. Say. That that's please. Thank you, Maurice. I mean, I mean, please let it go. B- bringing people out there like we never did it. Like I said, because you know we had a trumpet section, and not saying the Jackson State ain't done it because they did it at Alcorn and it was it tore me up, but. Yeah, it just was too much. Me, I, I had to give it to Alabama A and M myself, and I was and I was torn because I kind of wanted to give it to Texas Southern, but 
the dude singing, man, it just hurt it for me. Especially they came out with Nelson Mandela and the uh, South African national uh, anthem. You know, I, I thought that uh, Alabama State was too regular, just a normal Alabama State. I thought Alcorn was subpar to me. Like, I thought that they were better at the Capital City class or the Soul Bowl, whatever you want to call it, because the dancer team was just it just weirded me out. Uh, Valley had too many holes. And uh, Prairie View was hashtag uh, DTM. So it was really down to Texas Southern and Alabama A&M for me. And I gave it to Alabama A&M just because of the singer, really. So who knows? That could be subconsciously Texas Southern. But it was really between, for me, it was between those two. Maurice, who do you think was your overall winner, man? I think uh, for me, if I had to do an overall thing, it's probably because everybody had holes and everybody had problems out there. Um, probably give it. I'd probably give it to Alabama State. Okay. Um, All right. So we they they basically stay true to who they were and what they do. Uh, of course, I did I did talk about that space and stuff and those problems that that they need to fix. But overall. They, what you said, Joe, that they stayed true to what they do and they were just regular. And I think that really worked for them. They bought those honey bees out there like they normally do. It's beginning to be a mixture for them. But hey, I'm not hating on them. If it works, it works. You know? Mm-hmm. So, I, so I, I got, think putting them last was good, too. So, so we had Alabama State. Uh, Troy, you said Alabama State, too, right? No. I hated Alabama State show. I'm much. sorry. What, what did who, who? I'm sorry. So who did you I like? Say? Alabama A and M. I like Alabama. Alabama A and Okay, so right. So me and you had Alabama A and M and Rashad. Who did you say that you gave first place to? I thought I thought Alabama State did a tremendous job. That's who it was. I, okay. I would simply say they had the overall general effect score, greatest show. But I think that they were overall the best band there. Like when I said the Texas Southern needed to do some things in order to get to that upper echelon of bands in their in their category, I definitely think that Alabama State is competitive with those other with Jackson and Southern, whereas a lot of other bands they're not there yet. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. So we had uh, one for Alabama A and M. We had two for Alabama A and M. We had two for Alabama State, and then I was kind of. A little trip about Texas Southern myself, but at least we had that. You you were free to enter the chat room or give us some feedback on the fifth or whatever while you feel or who you had in your own places about uh, the Battle of the Bands. You can check out the videos on our website, themarchpodcast.com, or on YouTube or wherever you are checking out your uh, information about the SWAC Battle of the Bands. We are running late Somewhat, but we got a a 90-minute time, so we'll take this last block now and talk about our featured matchup for the night, which is the Boombox Classic, Jackson State versus Southern, a great game. We're going to go ahead and go to – and we'll hear from our sponsors in this commercial break. This next break is brought to you by Bandhead.org and HBCUBands.com and Block Band Music. So let's take the time to hear from them now. Hi, this is Chris Jones, owner and founder and creator of March Aerobics. My website is cj at marcharobics.com. And you listen to the 90 Degree Show in the Marching Podcast Network. Now get your legs up. What if there was a Facebook for bands? Wait a minute, there is. Bandhead.org. Bandhead.org is a social network for HBCU show bands. You can create your own profile and post videos, photos, and comments on Bandhead.org. Need somewhere to post events, audition schedules, job postings? Check out Bandhead.org. Are you recruiting for talent? Go to Bandhead.org. And coming this fall, HBCUBands.com. Write that down, HBCUBands.com. Block Band is a minority-owned music business that you can think of as your assistant band director. We help grow your musicians with a great selection of traditional concert band music. Then we back up their performance with necessities like reeds, oil, drum heads, drumsticks, and mallets. Finally, we outfit your players in auxiliary and shoes, spats, and gloves that match our precise custom drills. Got band? If so, then Block Band's got you. Check blockbandmusic.com or call us at 919-698-2560. 
That's blockbandmusic.com, 919-698-2560. Hello, this is Dr. Joel Beard, Jackson State alumnus, 1966. I march in the Jackson State Marching Band, which is then called Band in the Land. And you are now listening to the 90 Degrees Show here on the Marching Podcast Network. We're back and we're ready to talk about our featured matchup, the Boombox Classic uh, Part 2. And first, we'll brush over the zero quarter. Uh, you're listening again to Southern after this commercial break. Uh, that is on my grind, uh, or on the grind. I keep messing that up. But uh, that's something I really, really like. They played that actually first, I think, in the zero quarter. Um, I'll go ahead and brush this one right quick for our time. I didn't get much, much from the zero quarter, but both bands were blowing at each other, and I thought it was pretty even. I thought the play call was even, and each, you know, they followed the rap theme, you know, getting crunk for the game. But everybody was hype and full of energy. Uh, from our beloved fifth quarter, uh, Black Magic, Blink Black Magic post, he said just going off the zero, uh, zero quarter clip, he felt <clears throat> that Jackson State took it to SU. He felt that the difference was the song selection or the play calling. He gave us a shout out, and that uh, the song selection was better. And they seemed more intense and energetic uh, in terms of the sound. Both bands sounded like themselves, but Jeff and J- but JSU felt he had a little bit more of an edge. Uh, he felt that uh, I got five on it was dope. Power was nice. The time four by Jay Z was crazy, uh, but he felt that JSU had the extra punch. Uh, so shout out to Black Magic uh, for your feedback and shout out for the play call and reference and listening to the show. Um, halftime to me, I thought Jack's, I thought it was one of the <clears> best <throat> shows I've seen from them this year. Um, well, you know what? Uh, did you guys check out the Zero Quarter, Troy? Did you check out the Zero Quarter? <clears throat> I certainly did. I certainly okay, did. Okay, what did you think about it, man? Um, I, I gave it to Jackson State. And I gave it to Jackson State for the same reason that the guy that – comment that gave it to him, it was the song selection or play calling. You know, I think Jackson State really stepped it up. And from what I'm hearing, that wasn't I Got Five on it. That was a, a new song by Yo Gotti that I guess just came out this week. I'm reading in our uh, in Illuminati group. So that was, okay, it, yeah. it sounds like five on it, yeah. He's, yeah, he said, I, yeah, let me give him credit. He said, uh, he said that it sounded like I Got Five on it, but it was mixed with uh, Yo Gotti, I know, and said he said it was dope. Yeah, so yeah, good, yeah. Thanks yeah. for letting me know because um, I wouldn't have read that if you didn't tell me. So good, good looking, Troy. No problem. So um, they both had both bands had energy, but I, Jackson State. It, what I've been looking for in the last maybe two years that we've been playing Southern is that killer instinct, and it seemed like they had it. Just you know, they they came out, they came ready to, to battle, and they did it in the zero quarter. You know, I. They they gave it to him. They took it to him this time. I was pleased. Uh, Maurice, I think I think we got Maurice there. Maurice, are you still there? Yeah, uh, I'm still Ma- here. Okay, cool. What did you think about the zero quarter, man? I actually heard the zero quarter while walking through the stadium, so I can't give a proper assessment. Okay, okay, that's cool. Uh, Rashad, what do you think about the zero quarter, man? Rashad, you there? Oh, my bad. I'm t- I, I, I muted myself. <laughs> I was about to say, I had you on this time. Joe, look at the fire, man. Look at the fire. I, I meant to do fire. that. I, meant to do I wasn't looking at the fire. That's what was. <laughs> Joe, there was one clear winner, man. One clear winner. And that was the band from Jackson, Mississippi. Man, I, I think your man, Troy, I think he hit it on the nail. They have got that killer instinct now. There is when every, every time that I have seen Jackson and Southern in the past, and when you watch the two of them play, when you watch Southern, there's a total commitment to what they're doing. Like mm-hmm. 
You don't care, and that's the thing that puts selling above most bands. I, I don't care really what you say about how they play. There's almost no other band in the country that every single brass player is committed to playing the way that they play, and that's what makes them great. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's what Jackson State was putting on Southern. They had when you watch him, you like you're watching these guys. I remember I was watching one guy, and he looked like he was like about to have a heart attack as a baritone player. <laughs> right in the center of the band, and he was spasming out every time he played. And I'm not saying that's what makes him great, but I'm saying it's the total commitment to your style. And the number one thing that really put them over in my mind, I'm doggone mellophones. Yes. Mellophones, they have, they've they got to fix that, man. It's a cancer right now. I'm sorry. Listen to these clips. You listen to the, to the Holy Grail that they've been playing, that everybody's so hype about this year. Mellophones are destroying it, man. Um, and there's a lot of times, and if you listen to this fifth quarter, there's so many times with, like, Mellophones, what are y'all doing? Whereas when you listen to Jackson State, you hear them hit some high notes, and they are perfect. They, the Mellophones at Jackson nail their notes, probably their high notes, probably better than any other band I've heard recently. Mm. And that's what, and that's the, the, both bands are extremely powerful. But the, their ability to nail it in like that, that's what put Jackson over the top, man. So they were they were the clear winner. They were just destroying Southern. I hope I hope that Southern gets it back because, you know, everybody knows that's one of my favorite bands. But they got outdone today or yesterday. Yeah, it was definitely, like you said, that, that killer instinct. I remember, and Troy and uh, Mauricio, all you guys can vouch for, I remember they were always saying, you can't outplay or out – out below Southern, you have to outplay them. So don't let the intensity, you know, don't let the moment start getting you out of playing your, you know, playing your style or playing how you play. But now it looks like the boom is like getting crunk and 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 trying to outblow Southern now. You know what I'm saying? But they're still keeping that that woodwind, those woodwinds and those layers. So I mean, Dow Taylor's just doing a good job, man. You just got to you just got to give him a lot of credit. Um, we are like running close, so let's go ahead and let's get this halftime. I thought Jack State had a really good halftime show, mostly because of the drill. I love the drill. It was something yeah. different, and it looked good. And again, shout out to Doctor <laughs> Taylor. He's really doing his thing as far as getting them on that field. You know, um, there was some small precision issues, but nothing blaring and nothing that they weren't corrected in the final formation. I just like how uh, uh, Jackson State marches into the JSU. You know, they're just marching in the company fronts, and then there it is, boom, it marches up and turns into the JSU. And then they had more than your normal 32 squads out there because it looked like they had some lines over the JSU. And and, and you got to have that formation tight, you know, no excuses. You know what I mean? And I think that's important. But the boom always sounds good, and I love how they don't lose sound or volume through their drill. You know, they're doing all of the things that you see, but you still hear the song. And it's just a complete show. Um, I love that they did Rock the House from the Ground, which was different. Um, Getting into Southern real fast, it was the, like, exact same thing as far as Jackson State. It was like they were going tit for tat during the drill. Southern didn't bust out the halftime show, which I was a little scared of, uh, the halftime score. But they did the same thing. They did a good drill, and then they executed into their SU very, very well. The only difference was uh, it was uh, it was quick. Their drill was really quick. Uh, so I had to give the drill to Jackson just because I thought it was longer and more intricate. And then, you know, for all the people that are not familiar with Southern, usually their drum major starts their show with an impression from Smokey from the movie Friday when he was in the car with the Latinos and he found out what he was smoking and he, like, started twitching and jumping up. <laughs> usually usually Southern starts their show with that, but he didn't do it this time. He looked like he just kind of did, like, an oblique type of stretch and then just did the back bend. So I was like, well, what was that about? I was I was waiting for the, you know, the, the Smokey joint, but he didn't do it. Um, then they, then of course they started marching in the field, marching beautifully. Um, but then, um, not really sure what to think about the soul train. Uh, I, I thought it was, I thought it was, well, I thought it was innovative and it would, and it made, it made me pull my attention. Like I was like, Oh, what's somebody going to do next? 
But I, th- I felt the format was similar to their four boxes where, you know, these four boxes do yeah. something, this box does something. But I thought that, you know, I thought that it was okay that they tried to do something out of the box. But then when I saw the whole band go back there, I was like, whoa. Like, and at parts, yeah. there were flashes where it was like, oh, that's tight. But then it was like, okay, I don't know. I don't know. So I wasn't sure. I had, I mean, I gave them props for trying something different. I thought that they were <laughs> dead even though. But I gave, I gave yeah. Southern, like, the props with a slight edge just because it was something innovative i mean the boom was innovative too they did rock the house different um but i just thought southern i just i don't know it was a little bit of a wild car a little bit of a hail maker so to speak maurice what do you nah. think man about the halftime shows uh maurice the you did it? Shows oh, there you were, yeah i'm still here i think the halftime shows were pretty good um first of all i think the winner was jackson state down right <coughs> to the point um as you started off doing this, this some type of a linear drill where they just they do like this sixteen sixteen count rotary motion with their squads. I don't yeah, consider that a drill at all. I like never have. Um, I think that them opting not to do an actual pairs of motion drill uh, that they normally do was bad for them. Um, Jackson State's drill, on the other hand, was executed with precision. It was something different, something we're not used to seeing. It got the crowd and the attention. It was good. The announcer said what he said in order to get us to look at what they were doing with the drill. I think that that was perfectly executed. Um, Southern Soul Train line thing was something new. So if we had to put something new in, Jack State did a new drill. They did a new thing with their dance routine. And I think Southern kind of, they kind of failed. They kind of failed with that. And I don't think that they failed because of the, dances they were doing, they failed because anybody that's been watching Southern long as I have know that Southern has this this mindset that when they know they've been defeated, they will make sure that their announcer talks too much. And I think the announcer was got to the point where he annoyed me where he was talking all through the dance routine where you where it was just like he just kept on saying, Do this, do this and do this blah 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 and he just kept on, kept on, kept on. So it it, it brought an or a need for confusion because you were seeing the whole band line up and go do the soul train thing, but then you were trying to listen to what this man was saying over the intercom. So I, I don't think that, that they pulled that off well, in my opinion. Um, I think that the J6 thoroughly and with, I'm talking about professionally, I danced the, uh, the dancing dolls to a T. It was just crazy how they went out there and put those stunts in there, but they put enough dancing with those stunts to where it was a perfected dance routine. So, all in all, um, Jackson State's dance routine was done well. I love the fact that they changed the Rock the House up and gave us something different, some of the stuff we used to do back in the 90s, getting on the ground, doing something else with it in order to keep the crowd into the show. So I think Jackson State took it hands down. All right, uh, Troy and Rashad, I hate to say it, man, but we got like like five minutes left. Uh, and this new format, I am not able to change this time that we got in the studio. Usually I can add more time, but I'm not seeing how to do that here. So, Rashad, right quick, man, what did you think about the halftime show? Who did you think won? Uh, exactly opposite of a man that just spoke there. Uh, I definitely would put it on, on Southern. You're exactly right. Sound and drilling, both bands really good. I wasn't impressed by either drill. What What did they make? Southern should have did the drill for the Bayou Classic. They would have take, they would have destroyed it. That drill was awesome for Bayou Classic. Um, but the elephant, the ten thousand pound elephant in the room, real quick, is that Jack State did not do a dance routine and they had gimmicks, Joe. If they did gimmicks, they lost, right? <laughs> they brought out the Super Seven and then they brought out the Fat Boys and then they did not do a dance routine. They just did JSUSU rock the house. Therefore, Southern comes out and does something. Bam! They took the win. They asked them. That's how I see it. <clears throat> Troy, what would you think, man? Hands down, Jackson State. I'm going to tell you why very, very quickly. Jackson State did something new, something we hadn't seen before. Southern's dance routine was an epic fail, in my opinion. I hated every single second of it. I, I don't know what the sentiment was in the in the crowd, but from what I was listening to, it didn't get any house. It was terrible. So Jackson State not doing a dance routine it's better than doing one that failed and belly flopped and landed on their face. I hated that dance routine from the start to the finish. It definitely was too. a little. It definitely was a little off. Uh, black, 
back black crap ninety four uh on the fifth says he felt that both bands sounded good. He wasn't sure about the s u sectional dance to the tubas uh playing flashlight. He didn't know what was up. He said, so what exactly was the dance routine? He thought it was a complete mess. He thought the s u drill was clean and the rest. Um, but he didn't like uh, JSU's big box diamond drill. But since the drum majors were in the middle, he uh, he said, I guess maybe it was a drum major feature. The dance routine was the drum majors doing whatever they did. And, of course, the fat boys looking country. I didn't see the halftime shows on TV, but hoping the dance features were not shown. Best parts of both shows were the majorettes. Uh, then, of course, Jackson Noise Talker. Uh, says that he thinks JSU and um, Southern did a both job. Didn't really get Soul Train's Soul Tra- Soul Train's Southern Soul Train line, but overall thought the show was a matter of Southern being Southern. Really enjoyed his alma mater show. Overall, a great event and one of the best boom boxes. Uh, not sure about, uh, but he felt that. Uh, like he says, when did these two meet? He said, I'll comment on the bands later. Okay, yeah, he wasn't saying much, but he felt as uh, pretty much the same as you guys, and looks like we're kind of split on the show. Yeah, I did. I thought Jackson State did dance a little bit to say they didn't quote unquote have a a dance routine. I I wouldn't say that, but definitely um, the having the big dudes and the dudes in the blue and yellow uh, was the same to me. Like we've done that before. And it wasn't different. Southern, they took a, like, to me, it was a hail maker. Like, they definitely took a shot in the dark. And I don't really know how it was, how it was perceived with the, their people either. But I just thought that they were just doing something different. I gave them a slight edge just because um, they were doing something different. But you and the fans listening, uh, I know this show is cutting short. But uh, on the 5th, on Twitter, on Facebook, you're free to give your comments. Uh, leave in the chat room or whatever. Uh, we're going. Uh, we don't have time for a last commercial break, but I want to give you guys your parting shots, Troy. Anything else uh, you're looking for? Uh, uh, we appreciate you and your time this year. This is our last broadcast this year. We'll be doing one for the Honda Battle of the Bands, and then our 2014 Marching Podcast Award for the 2013 year. Uh, do you have anything on the radar you're looking forward to, man? Oh, um, you know what? You know what? Your parting shots. Let me, let me give you this. Um, well, I will give you this. Out of the eight bands uh, on the way out, who do you think is going to win the Hot Battle of the Bands? That's what I wanted to ask you. Alabama A and M, Alabama State, Bethune Cookman, Morehouse, North Carolina A and T, South Carolina State, Arkansas Pine Bluff, or Winston Salem State. A and T. A and T. Yeah, yeah, they. Yeah, I'm a little worried about them myself, but Jackson State ain't in it this year. So, um, but you wanted to tell me one thing. You said you were looking for you were you were looking for uh, up to for Troy. <clears throat> Nothing much. I'm just looking forward to next season, man, and, and seeing the boom improve in third year. You know, under Dal Taylor. So. All right, man. Well, well good to hear from you, man. And good to hear from you, man. And I'll talk to you this week, man. Good show. I appreciate you again, man. All right, man. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, man. Same to you. All right, we got 90 seconds here. Maurice, um, what do you think? Same question. Honda Ballot of Bands, Alabama A&M, Alabama State, Bethune, Morehouse, a t South Carolina State, uh, Pine Bluff, or Winston-Salem State? I definitely think it's going to be between Bethune, Cookman, and A&T. Between okay. two of those. Yeah, man. I, I Yeah, that's definitely some really good choices. Anything that you come, got coming, looking up forward to, uh, Maurice? I'm looking forward to the Honda. Uh, There's a lot of MEAC MEAC bands there, but I'm looking forward to see who who triumphs in the end. Okay. Good to hear from you, Maurice. Happy New Year. Uh, Merry Christmas. Thanks again for your time being on the show. We'll holler at you again in the new year. Uh, Rashad, what are you quick, man? Right quick, who you think? Alabama State, Alabama A&M, Bethune, Morehouse. I, I, got, I got lined up. <laughs> oh, my bad. Uh, Sorry. That, from last year, a lot of people thought that A&T was the best band. I disagree. I thought they, Bethune Cook, it was definitely the best band, and A&T was third. But I think this is, year, this is A&T's year to prove that they are the best band, and I think that A&T is going to take it home. I think they're going to clean up their problems. No, and, Joe, I just want to say thank you for this show, man. I've enjoyed it this year. Thank you for what you do for this, man. You're an innovator. I appreciate it. Hey, man, I appreciate you too, man. 
We're coming to the end of our show, and that's all we have. Check out the website, marchpodcast.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. The eye is a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Advice may be misleading, but examples are always clear. See you next time.